I had to use something a bit sexy because I was posted against Meg John. So I thought three dirty words would be a good way to start. Now, don't get too excited. They are <laughs> fluidity, confusion, and choice. And what I want to suggest is it's time for us to take them back. So take them back from who? Well, I think as bisexual people, we're often caught between a homophobic heterosexism, which then promotes a reactive homonormativity. So we're caught in between what is otherwise called bigotry and the policing of what it is to be queer, what it is to be in a, a gay community. And that these three words have become taboos. Uh, now, really, in a lot of ways, I have sympathy for this because, after all, fluidity, what does that mean? Well, it means people can change. We're in the business of changing, aren't we? Uh, we're in the business of growing. Except that's the logo of a conversion therapy organization in the USA. Yeah? And uh, we have our own brand, of course, here. They put posters on buses and so forth. And of course, we want to distance ourselves at all from any notion that therapy can turn you straight again. And of course, we celebrate this in um, numerous ways. And since the 70s and 80s, there's been a drive to assert that being gay is biologically determined. And uh, if we're born this way, then you've got to stop persecuting us. And this continues. Uh, the Royal College of uh, Psychiatry uh, claimed for a long time that uh, sexual orientation is biological in nature, determined by genetic factors and or the early uterine environment. Now, of course, this punches holes for any acceptance of uh, bisexuality to say because most people are like this, we are not going to talk about the minority. We are going to continue to deny and uh, design all our treatment protocols around the notion of what applies to most people. And again, I get it, all right? I get it. I get why there is this need for this social construction that says, first get people to understand there are straight and gay people. Until then, and I've been told this, don't undermine us by talking about fluidity. It's, a, in it, it's an experience for lesbian and gay people that this undermines the, the safe space that we've been fighting so long for. Stop it. Go away with your damned fluidity. And guess what? They do. And do you know where they go to? Here! Fluidity is your heterosexual potential. Come unto me. Mm. And very much conversion therapy targets alienated and disenfranchised bisexual people, people who have become uh, disillusioned, have attempted to, to join the lesbian and gay community and have felt exiled from it and attempted to go to therapy and found somebody affirmative saying, it's okay to be gay. And they're actually saying, that's not my experience. Whereas these guys will talk about fluidity. Oh, somebody understands me. And they directly target uh, disillusioned and uh, confused bisexuals. So I'm going to ask you to consider simple concept number one. Sexuality may be fluid for some people and changes sometimes. But such changes cannot be made to happen through the exploitation or the denial of minority trauma. Because what does this actually mean to the people who come into our rooms? These are from clients uh, uh, with permission. I find that born this way meme as oppressive as people who say, you're sick this way. It's like if you didn't jump out of the womb declaring what you are for all time, then you don't really count. Like if what you are changes, then what you are isn't real. It was so damaging, insulting to both of us. Like poor you, 
your girlfriend was a dyke all along and you were being used. All that mind-blowing love and sex between you was fake. Making out before I was just a closet case and lying when I had really loved him. And here's someone speaking delicately from the heart. It's fucked. The whole mentality. You've got to be in this box or that box. And whatever box you're in now, the one before was wrong. Because if you mean how you feel now, then you can't, have meant what you, you can't have meant what you felt then. So some of the themes in this, as we've talked about, is that non-static identity is experienced as unpredictable, unreliable, unstable, too complicated, unknowable, and hidden. So with those clients pulling out these themes, one of the things that we explored is that a label statement, the comforting thing about that is it implies stasis, something that is lasting and something that is innate. And in fact, aren't there much more interesting things about you that are lasting and enduring? and exploring other, more enduring qualities of that person's identity, such as truthful, open, flexible, brave, accepting, evolving, and multi-layered. And here's everyone's favorite. And I'm going to get a bit academic and go to an esteemed publication here. <laughs> and uh, here is a headline. Becoming bisexual has made me so confused. But it's all right, because we've got Deirdre here. <laughs> and Deirdre says to this girl, she says, don't rush to tell your girlfriend how you feel about her, because it could alter the friendship, and there would be no going back. However, the boy you fancy is being understanding and holding back, which is great. You could try a friendly date and you would probably quickly get an idea whether you wanted more or less. So it's not surprising that there's some confusion about this, but. And as uh, one of my uh, colleagues, Anne Lander, put it so succinctly for me is, so a bisexual man is really a confused gay man, scared to admit he's gay. And a bisexual woman is really a confused straight woman seeking male attention, because we all want the dick, eh? <laughs> <laughs> now, we're being robbed here. We are being robbed blind <coughs> of our right to grow and question and have space to grow and question. And... Uh, we hear in the heterosexual environment with people growing up time and time again, it's normal to feel confused. Now equally, I read a, um, in, in my research, I found a agony aunt being incredibly affirming to um, a young person. And she said, it, it's normal to feel confused. And she was pilloried. Oh my goodness, we were cross, weren't we bisexual people? Don't call me confused. Now, I'm going to challenge that. Simple concept number two is bisexual people are no more or less confused by sexuality than other people are. But the world's confused narrative about sexuality makes bisexuality more confusing. And that's turned up, obviously, in therapy. It's like, if I say, I'm really confused about how I feel right now, you know? Not sure about some big stuff that somehow I'm letting the side down. <coughs> Other people are allowed the luxury of being unsure. When people assume that because I'm with a woman, I'm a lesbian, I correct them and you can just feel the air cloud over. Comments, assumptions, really stupid personal questions. I feel infected. I want to say it's not me who is confused, but you seem to find me confusing. And I hope you like this person because I love this client. <laughs> I am confused. I don't get it at all. I'm confused that people think they can treat me like I'm wrong. 
That I really don't get. I'm confused why it's so bloody hard to understand there are lots of reasons I get hot for someone. Whether it's cock or vagina comes a lot later than whether we're talking, talking really, whether we dance good together or have a laugh. So some of the themes that we were able to pick out here is, is the cause that you are bisexual because you are confused? Or perhaps you're confused because you are bisexual. And you're confusing because you are bisexual. And confusion begins to take on this kind of infectious thing, like some STD or something. <laughs> yeah? Because you're, you're confused about me. No, I'm confused about your confusion. And, and who? Actually, we're not allowed to talk about confusion. So I'm confused by others' confusion. Now, I love the word confusion. And when a client tells me, I'm confused, I go, I'm so glad that you are confused. Because the actual root of the word, it says with, con, fusion, which is blending, coming together, bringing things which normally previously were separate and seen as different and actually integrating of those differences generating and sitting with questions, not leaping to a need for certainty. And without taking ourselves to a place of confusion, we can never be at a point of new learning. It is a requisite for growth. It is a requisite for new understanding, for new perspective. And it is softening those barriers that we've set up between <coughs> these binaries. And, and anyone who knows me, they, holding paradox. Because I live by the mantra that <clears throat> when, we, when we touch paradox, we are closest to healing. And I think that's true of us socially as well as individually. I think that's true of us spiritually as well as uh, materially. Okay. Ready for the next one? Yeah? So it's such an innocent word, isn't it? Except it's not a choice, it's not a lifestyle, it's genetic. <laughs> Don't talk to me about choice. Don't accuse us of choosing this lifestyle. But, you know, there's some really respectable quiz who, who actually say that sexual orientation is a political choice. No, I don't get it. I'll say that first of all. I don't get it, but you know what, how I feel about confusion. I'd love to hear this narrative, and I don't get to, because this is denied space. What I do know is I, I've worked with lots of clients who say, I wish I could be lesbian, and it's not on offer in therapy. And I also have worked with people who chose relationships with women because they thought that was the right thing to do and broke lots of hearts. So I'm interested about this, but I don't understand it. But can we give it space? Can we allow this discourse in without feeling threatened because of what bigots tell us? And um, you might remember this story in the press of um, uh, Cynthia Nixon. She said, I've been in straight relationships and I've been in gay relationships. And I get to choose as a bisexual, and being gay is better. Oh my goodness, what an outcry. Demands for apologies. And finally she said, we can't and shouldn't be pigeonholed into one cultural narrative which can be uninclusive and disempowering. It doesn't matter if we flew here or if we swam here. It matters that we are here and we are one group. And let us stop trying to make a litmus test for who is considered gay and who is not. And this last week, I got something lovely through the post from the States, and I thought, oh, you said it. Do we not value personal freedom enough to argue for equal rights and protections, even if sexuality were a choice? The as biology argument sounds like a defense of our existence rather than our claim to personal freedom. I note, however, that it is often the starting point in some arenas, and we're sometimes met with the already formed conclusion, 
that no rights are in order if sexuality is chosen. And that's from um, <coughs> Eric Grohlman, uh, University of Virginia. So here's simple concept number three. Most people do not experience orientation as a choice, and some people do. Bisexual people must make more choices than straight or gay people about community, relationship, and identity. So that's shown up with clients saying things like, why can't it be a choice? Why is that any less legitimate? I don't think bigots should define the terms of the debate. And really, it's as much a choice of what kind of man do I want to be in relationship with women. It's not just about sexually bonding with men. It's intellectual, too. The sexist pig in me has been challenged by being in a different bubble from the man-owns-woman one. At least I hope so. That heterosexual privilege is taunt to bisexual women really is the biggest excuse for lesbians to choose not to look at their own shit put-downs, insults, jealousy, control, forced sex, because if I objected, she'd say I was just holding over her that I had a choice to go back to the safe land of straits, until eventually I did. So where does that leave us? Well, fluidity, we're getting there. We've got Lisa Diamond's research, and here's a sign of progress. We've got a badge. We've got a sign, fluidity. Any minute now, we'll have LGBTQIAKF. <laughs> Confusion, we're starting to tolerate it in our postmodern world. <coughs> and this is from the American Psychological Association, but most of the psychiatric and psychological associations are now agreeing <laughs> that there is no consensus among scientists. Although much research has examined the possible genetic, hormonal development, social and cultural influences on sexual orientation, no findings have emerged that permit scientists to conclude that sexual orientation is determined by any particular factor or factors. And the great bit of me goes, who cares? <laughs> Let's stay with not knowing and exploring and the confusion of so many things that I am that is part of my story and, and what I am about. And so finally, I thought I'd just leave this a little bit open about choices, because we've heard a lot now today, and I'm just kind of wondering where you are. It doesn't have to be about this presentation, but anything you've, you've heard today about what are our choices now as a community? What are our choices about changing? How do we define ourselves? Is that from an innate search for authenticity or a defense to justify our right to be here? Thank you very much. Thank you.